Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 146. Today we will do a few more problems on the on the topic of radicals. Our second second video in the series of four. Before we do any of these problems, it is important, it is vital, it is crucial that you have watched 145 already, yesterday's video. If you have not watched the video that problems that we did yesterday, day number 145, watch that video first, stop this one right now, watch that video first, make sure you understand the concept, and then do these problems yourself first if you have not done so already before you continue, okay? Because I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to work under the assumption that you do understand the basic concept. So let's get going. The very first problem we have is 1949 49 times 33 plus 7 times 21. Again, we look at the four quantities. We look at the four quantities and we ask ourselves, is, is there any quantity here that we can either convert, into, convert it into a perfect square or is already a perfect square? The answer is yes, 49 is already a perfect square. If we can get a 49 out of this one, we are home free. We can write 21 as 7 times 3. 21 is 7 times 3, which is now 7 times 7 is going to give us 49 times 3. And here we have 49 times 33. And now we take a square root of it. We're going to take 49 as a common factor. If we take out 49 as a common factor, we're left with 33 from the first term, and we're left with 3 from the second term. Again, we take a square root of it. 33 plus 3 is going to be 36. So we end up with 49 times 36. The square root of it, the square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 36 is 6, and there is our answer. The answer is 7 times 6. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. Twenty-five times two plus fifty times seven. Again, this is twenty-five. We have to make this into twenty-five. Let's write point. Let's write fifty as twenty-five times two times seven. And here we have twenty-five times two. Twenty-five times two. We can take twenty-five as a common factor. Twenty-five is a common factor. Let's take it out. Take it out, this 2 is going to end up here, and here we're going to end up with 2 times 7. 2 times 7 is going to end up here as 14. 2 plus 14 is 16, so we end up with 25, 25, 25 times 16, and now we take a square root of it. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 16 is 4, the answer is 5 times 4. Now I hope, I hope that you are able to see right away that this problem that we just finished, problem number second, problem number two, will not qualify as a real problem on any of these exams. It will not appear on the exam. The others are, others are good candidates. These two are good candidates. The one before that we did was a good candidate. This one will not make a good candidate for the real exam. Why? Because it's too simple. It can be very easily done. It can be very easily done without any techniques, without any strategy, simply by brute force. We can do it simply by brute force in a matter of seconds. 25 times 2 is 50, and 50 times 7 is 350. 350 plus 50 is 400, and square root of 400, square root of 400 is 20, just like we found here. Square root of 400 is 20, which is exactly what we found here. And, you, and we did it in a matter of seconds, instead of doing all this process. But when we get something like this, obviously we cannot use brute force. We could use brute force, but that will take forever. Here we have to have a strategy. It, here we have to have a strategy. Not only, not only it would take forever to multiply 8 times 22 and 16 times 70, but once you do that, and when you add up the two figures, you end up in, you're going to end up with a huge figure, and figuring out the square root of that quantity is not that easy. We have to have some strategy. Let's do them together. But of course we know the process now. process is very simple. We look at the four quantities, 8, 22, 16, and 70. 
And we ask ourselves, is any one of these quantity a perfect square? If the answer is yes, then that's it, you're done. We, look, we work with that one. But if the answer is no, then we ask ourselves, is there any one of these four quantities that we could turn into a perfect square? For example, here, we have 28, we have 12, we have 32, and we have 2. None of these are perfect square. We're going to we're gonna have, to be little bit, we're gonna have to be a little bit more creative with this thing. We'll get to that in a second, okay? So here is our 16. We have to, we, we have to get a 16 here. Why don't, we, why, don't we write, why don't we write 22 as 2 times 11? 2 times 11. And now 2 times, 2 times 8 is 16. We get 16 times 11 plus 16 times 70. 16 times 70. Now we can get 16 as a common factor. Take out 16 as a common factor. When we do that, from here we are left with 11. And from the second term we are left with 70. 11 plus 70 is 81. And that's it, we are done. They are both perfect squares. And now we are ready to take the square root of it. We are supposed to take the square root of it. Now we can take the square root of it. Square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 81 is 9. And obviously, had we, go, had, we, had we done it manually, we would have gotten the huge numbers, and knowing that that huge number actually is a perfect square of 36 would have been difficult. Let's do the last one. It's very important that you try these questions on your own first. You will always get more out of it, a lot more out of it, if you try them first yourself. 32 times 2. Now, we might be tempted, we might be tempted to say that 32 times 2 is 64. Already and 64 is a perfect square. Yes, it is a, it is a perfect square. We could get 64 there, but there is no way to get 64 here. So we can't take 64 as a common factor. We're going to have to do something else. Well, I see 32. We know half of 32 is 16, and 16 is a perfect square. Can we get us to... Uh, can we get a 16 out of that one? We could try getting a 16 out of it. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's first, let's, the thing to do here is to first break them down into their prime factors. 28 can be written as 4 times 7. 12 can be written as 4 times 3. There you go, there is your 16. You see, there is your 16, 4 times 4. And here, 32 can be written as, well, 32 is a, uh, it's just 2 times 2 times 2. We can write them, uh, write it as, we can write it as, 32 can we write as 16 times 2 and then times 2. The reason I wrote it like this is because we're going we're gonna to take 16 as our common factor, this and that. Let's start 16 as a common factor. I don't know yet what, what's going to happen at the end. If it doesn't work out at the end, if it turns out that this quantity does not come out to be a perfect square, you're going to have to start again. We're going to have to play with something else. Let's do it. So once we take out 4 times 4, we are left with 7 times 3, which is 21. And, oh, there we go, 21 and 4. 21 and 4. 21 plus 4 is 25. Because we take out 16 as a common factor, we are left with 2 times 2, which is 4. That's it, we are done. 21 plus 4 is 25. So we end up with 16 times 25. And now we take a square root of it very easily. It's just going to be 4 times 5. 4 times. 4 times 5 is uh, 20. But well, this quantity must be 200 then. This quantity must be 200. I'm very curious now. 28 times 12, I'm going to do it here. 28 times 12 is same as 280 plus 28 plus 28. Because you see 280 represents 10, 10, 10, 28. We have 12, 28. We have 12, 28. So I, I took it as 10, 28. On the 28, on the 28, so that's 12, 28, and here we have 64. 8 plus 8 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20, 2, carry 2, uh, 0, carry 2, 2 plus 8 is 10, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 6 is 10, oh, it is 4, it is 400. I don't know why I sound so surprised, it would have to be 400, because that's what the answer is. And the square root of 400, when we take the square root of 400, that's 20. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.